Hello everybody and welcome to the video, my name is Speedway and I hope you're having a wonderful day, I sure am. But today I come to talk a little bit more about the Legend of Mushroom, in particular about what's the best class in this game, right? So the game just came out like 4 days ago and it has a deep customization system which we're gonna be going through right now. So. As you might have already thought about, as I just told you, there is different classes in this game, right? So you start being just a little mushroom and then you can level up to be an adventurer level 15 and eventually at level 30 you have to pick a class. Now, I wondered what is the best class in this game? Well, let's just talk about that in a moment, right? Because every class has its niches and its uses and it's going to come down to your personal preference, but it's of course going to be one that's going to be the best. So we'll try and figure which one that is, right? So as you can see, I chose some mage, like you might have already in the game most people are going mage and the reason for that is because well it just does a lot of damage but it also has a stun right so once you get to the point you actually choose a mage or choose anything else you will be able to get an active skill of that class in this case as a mage we got the meteor the meteor blitz which is going to be doing a lot of damage but basically every other class will get uh, an ability that will do the same amount of damage the difference is going to be the effect that it does afterwards so in the case of the meteor it's going to be um, doing an attack and extended duration of basic attack stuns on targets within the range of 30%. So basically it's going to be extending the duration of your stuns, which comes really, really strong. It's really strong in stages where you are still not that strong and you need to be stunning the bosses or in particular in PvP. Stuns are a lifesaver and basically just gives you more time in order to kill stuff, right? So... We are all basically going with that, but you can also choose some of the other stuff. Now, more stuff you get as a mage, you get some baseline passive script, and then you also get some attack. Now, once you go to the next level on your mage, if you choose to be a mage, then you will be able to choose something else. A healer or a spellcaster's healer will be able to get more regen on their skills, which is also a very, very strong option, and I'm heavily debating going healer because of just that thing alone, because more active skills will mean more damage on the long run. But then if you choose to be a spell caster instead you will be getting skill critical strike damage right so that's also a lot of extra damage right so what's the right choice well i am thinking healer might just be pulling ahead but let's keep going and seeing what we get right so at level 70 as a spell caster we get active skill damage dealing 80 percent extra damage to targets below 50 percent at this point the extra damage is already getting a lot lot higher right and you gotta realize these values gotta be multiplicative or gotta be additive you can check that out if you go to your um, gear breakdown you can go right here and you can see everything you get you can check that out if that is additive or multiplicative i am too i am right now i'm not too sure but that really will determine what the best one is right because if you are looking at just raw damage the spellcaster is looking to be really really strong right now pretty much the best one that's why everybody's going spellcaster right so far down there uh, as we go from a spellcaster down to the next thing you will be able to be a bishop at that point you get your level 100 passive skill where you will be getting a next basic attack is going to be dealing increased 100% damage when basic attacks don't really do too much but that's also more damage so better stuff and this point you can also uh, whether you are a female or a male you will be also getting a different form so that's also something to consider if you enjoy the looks of one of the classes you might as well go ahead for and choose that one and then eventually at the dark lord or rather the maxed evolution level at the awakening you will be changing your active skill from one thing to another just increasing basically the effect of your active skill for your class and increasing the damage that it does by a lot right so that is the mage side of things now why is everybody going mage well i'm just thinking because it's, it's just doing the most amount of damage really if you go spellcaster now going healer will also basically give you a lot of damage because eventually you unlock uh, prolonging active skills so active skills that are not instant will also just last longer so that's a pretty pretty damn powerful uh, tool for just doing more damage so that's that one thing to consider then it's also going to do the next every once uh, one stun triggers reduce the cooldown of all active skills by uh, 0.3 seconds so even less cooldown on your active skills at this point you're just using skills like crazy and more skills means more damage so i think eventually once you get to these points your healer is going to be a bit stronger than your spell caster and eventually of course you will also be changing your active skill in this case uh, what's going to be doing it's that it's going to be um let's see here uh, receiving a range uh, lasting eight seconds break enemy shields instantly attack uh, with attack so you basically destroy every enemy shield um that probably still also really damn powerful in pvp just like stuns but just like breaking shields immediately 
uh, that it sounds pretty damn crazy, especially if there's going to be some shields in the later stages of the campaign as well. Really, really damn powerful choice. But as you can see, the damage is just the same for every active skill. So it really comes down to the passives and the effect of the active skill. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens if we go Archer, right? So Archer is uh, focused a little bit more on combo damage. So here we go. We have the attack, which basically just does the same amount of damage. And then it's going to be increasing the combo damage with the the targets by 60%. Now, how does combo damage work? I am kind of unsure. So let's just go ahead and see if we can find something about it here. But as you can see, we just have a stat that's called combo. So what does combo do? Let me, let me know in the comments if you know, because I honestly do not know, but it's probably something that does a lot of damage, to be fair. <laughs> I, I don't know, no. And maybe that's a really a big reason why people are not going with the archers, because, well, we just don't know what the hell combo does. But then you will be getting that extra combo damage from stuff and then increased attack speed and ignore evasion, so... Just some, some raw stats right there. Then going one path will give you the next stuff, right? So... In this case, we'll get even more combo damage if we go down the lower path for the Wind Crossbower. If we go Shadow Sniper, then we'll get critical damage bonus. So once again, we get even we get either one kind of stat or the other. In this case, more critical bonus damage, just like we got with the Spellcaster, or more combo bonus, right? So depending on where you are in the game, one might be better than the other. Now, eventually, we get more bullets uh, with every single shot, right? So you shoot two bullets during combos. I'm assuming combos are now stuff that you do, basically, when you are just using all your skills at once, uh, based just on that alone. And then on this other side, we'll have basic attacks have a 50% chance to deal extra damage equal to 1% of the current target's HP. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot, a lot of damage, but it's also just 1%. So still, depending on where you're at, this might just be enough damage to really justify the choice. Um, because even though the combos might be doing a lot of damage, 1% of every, uh, just the raw amount of health of something, uh, just imagine that on a raid. That is a lot of damage. Then eventually at level 100, we'll be getting the next thing. After a critical hit boosts attack by 40% for one second. I mean, one second is not too long. I don't know that one being too good. And then on the lower side of things, you will have fire two bullets during basic attacks. So you have more bullets during combos and more bullets during basic attacks. So this one is just like a machine gun, really. And then eventually you will be empowering your attack here, your um, your big active skill. Uh, in this case, to um, lasting 8 seconds, so in ignoring enemy evasion. So you're going to be ignoring enemy evasion and increasing the combo damage received by enemies by 60%. So ignoring enemy evasion is just doing, basically not missing ever. Uh, that, is, that is quite, quite, quite strong to be fair. And then what about this one? Uh, increase combo damage just like that as before and for eight seconds prevent targets from regenerating energy for six skills for four seconds So you are extending the cooldown on all the skills for four seconds basically that is damn powerful But it's not increasing your own damage too much So I'm assuming you'd rather go for more personal damage rather than reducing the abilities of the enemy in this game You'd rather just kill quick rather than kill slowly or be killed slowly, right? So I'm thinking the further option up here, if you're going to be going Hunter, you should probably be going with the lower path right here. What is it? The um, the Wind Crossbower, just because of the uh, the Ignorovation alone is going to be pretty damn powerful in all avenues of the game. Now, what about the Warriors? Now, the Warriors are a little bit more cut and clean. So once you choose a warrior, you will be getting the active skill, which is going to be increasing the counter damage received by targets but with the, within the range by 60%, lasting for 5 seconds. So counter damage is uh, an attack that you do whenever you attack. You will have a chance to trigger a counter attack, which just does a month, uh, an amount of damage based on your own damage, basically. And then you will have an extra counter of 30% and counter multiplier, so more damage. You will have naturally more defense. And then once you choose to either go up or down, so you can be a swordsman, which is going to be making you a lot tankier, I think it's, yeah, you will get damage resistance, then you will be getting uh, a shield every 10 seconds, absorbing 5% of the maximum HP for 5 seconds, so just even tankier, then you will be getting increased damage resistance by 2% for every 10% of HP loss, so just giga tanky, and the last one is going to be giving you... Uh, let's let's see. Uh, lasting eight seconds. Continue to continuously restore fifty percent of max HP for five seconds. Um, that is just insane, right? So you are going to be. I think if I read it right, right? Increase counter damage received by targets for five seconds and continuously restore fifteen percent of max HP for five seconds. So I'm assuming that's like every second you are restoring fifteen percent. 
if I'm reading it right, because otherwise it's only going to be triggering once. It, obviously, it's like five seconds. Within eight seconds, that's like one trigger. I'm assuming that's like once every second. So that is a lot of HP region. That is insane. I'm assuming if you want to have one of these guys in your raids for your for your family so don't discard being a warrior it's probably gonna be really really demanded for at least your family but it doesn't seem to have the best damage option so you might have a little bit of a struggle finding the damage within the campaign right so I'm, I'm a bit worried about that choice then if you go the lower side and you have your damage here you increase your counter damage and your active ability is going to obviously increase the counter damage received, as we already mentioned. The next one will reflect 80% of basic attacks damage when hit, so another counter, uh, but just a different mechanic. And eventually we'll be getting an increased attack of 3% per 10% HP lost, so instead of having more defense per HP loss, you will have more attacks, so it's like the Berserker kind of option. And then eventually you will be increasing your own active ability in order to doing the next uh, the next thing. So lasting for eight seconds, launch the targets into the air when countering within six five seconds. So you will be basically stunning the enemies. I think obviously once you are launched in the air, they are stunned. They are not able to attack you. So I'm assuming that it is going to be quite a strong option for PvP. Them if you can combo them and like stun them multiple times within those seconds, that's going to be quite a crazy combo, right? So if I was gonna be choosing a warrior i would probably be choosing the lower side just because of the extra damage is going to be a lot better for most things but you will probably need at least one tank in your family if i was to choose an archer because i really want to be an archer i would also go the lower side i'm assuming because it's just going to be having more damage as well just go wind crossbower and as a spellcaster i'm initially I'm, as a mage i'm initially going spellcaster probably until i get to the holy guide side of things because eventually at that point you just get so much skill region i'm assuming you are going to be overpowering your just raw damage with the skill cooldown in uh, just just reducing the cooldown on your skills i think that's really going to be a determining factor eventually to just be m just stronger but from the get-go i think mages have the most damage then it's going to be your archers and last on the damage department it's going to be your war bringers that is what i'm seeing right now but you can choose to play basically anything of course when you get enough uh, strength just from pulling gears and stuff you will be able to clear everything in the game but i'm assuming and i'm telling you and i am recommending you to go mage if you want to just make the best progress early on in the game i think it's the best option just because of the raw damage options and probably eventually switching to a healer within the mage tree because of the cooldown reduction so hopefully you enjoyed that check out after and everything in the links and down in the description if you're gonna get more value for your money by playing legend of mushroom just uh Download the game from Aptoid, play the game over there, and then whenever you make a purchase, you are going to be prompted to do so through the AppCoins wallet, and basically you can get up to a 30% cashback on any money spent. You can then use that cashback and make any purchases within the game for free, within this game or any other Android game that you downloaded through Aptoid. You can also do so through emulators on your PC. That also works. It doesn't work on iPhone, so there you go. Suck that up for iPhone users. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Let me know any, any questions you might have down below in the comments. I'll gladly answer them and just discuss stuff about this new game that I'm really enjoying right now down there. I am doing some massive progress within the campaign, by the way. I just got two AVs too, and I didn't even notice it. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Check out the link in the description for everything. Up to it, use my code for an extra 5%, just baseline extra bonus on your spendings. And just get more value for your money. Really recommend it. And you also help me out. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, see ya.